Back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All righty, let's bring in our main man, Lorenzo Neal. Hello. But first, let me read this text from the 415 on the Xfinity Mobile text line. Stand your ground, Guru. Stand your ground. The Niners should be scoring a minimum of 30 points per game. Red zone priority. Uh, they should prioritize Kittle. Nope. Can't score 30 points Lincoln. a game low. With a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo. Wow! Welcome to the show. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> you two, you two make my day, man. <laughs> I, my two favorite guys, guys. My God! It, 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 what a win, though, right? Go, go! It, it was ugly. Didn't it, you know? But it was, it was gutty. Especially off a of bye, you would think that they would go out and dominate a lot better than they did. But you guys got to admit that Herbert kid, he was, he was, he was, he showed the kind of heart and the tenacity. And that's a quarterback. That guy, you see how he doesn't have any, he doesn't have his first string, his second string receivers, doesn't have Keenan, doesn't have his number two receiver. And look what he was able to do. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, Lo, I, look, I'm trying to be positive, but I come in here and I tell Stani and the fans, I'm like, look, they still were 2 of 5 in the red zone. Now, okay, you got away with it last night, and I felt like that game shouldn't have been as close as it was. They won. I tipped my cap, but I didn't see a lot of Debo, but yet you still were 2 of 5. What's that tell you? Stani's like, give it some time. But when McCaffrey was acquired, I thought it was going to be the 4th of July left and right. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do understand. I, I, I don't think. I, I think people just got you got to temper expectations and just and like Steiny started off with the quarterback that you have. He just you, you, he's a good quarterback and he's a fine. He's a you know he's a good person. He knows football. But I, I, I look at him, Tannehan. I put him and Tannehan in the kind of the same breath. It's just those guys just don't go out, bro, and just light it up. They might have a game mm. here or there that they light it up. But, Goo, you're right. In the red zone, you were horrible. You just need to score touchdowns. Even in the game, you needed to score a touchdown to put that game, make it a two-score game, and you couldn't do it. You could not get in the mm. end zone, and you were trying everything you could. That just goes to tell you guys, I know everyone talks about I'm hearing guys and, you know, and some different guys on the show saying, oh, this team has the best weapons. It's one of the most talented teams and the NFL is one of the better teams. And I was like, newsflash, I, I don't think that you have top five receivers uh -oh. on, on, the, on this roster. I don't think you have – I don't think your offensive line is a, is, is a top five offensive line in football. I don't think your defense is a top – I think you have a guy in Nicky Bosa. Stiney's walking off play. low because you, you sounded like him. But uh, he's agreeing hey. with you. But go mm -hmm. ahead. Wow, oh. low. I didn't know you felt this way. Oh, I, I think you got one guy that is a game changer on defense, and you know that's Bosa. The rest of those guys, now they're good. It's a good, but you got to rest. They're a complimentary defense when you have Armstead and Ken Law and all those guys are healthy. Then they're an unbelievable defense. But when you don't have that and you think that now everyone says, well, this defense is just like, come on. This is not a great defense right now. People might say that. I'm mm. telling you, there's teams in Minnesota right now run them. Mm. Buffalo, you already seen when, when, play, when you played against, you already played against Kansas City and you got ran. When you, when you think about it, when you look at this team and, and you played a team last night that doesn't have a good run defense when like number 25th against the run and you, they, they bend, but they didn't break. You couldn't just put them away. That game, they, kudos, like you said, you tipped me out because you won. But I think that fans' expectations that think this team is some great team. And you guys are fools. This is fool's goal. You, this is not a great, great team. It's a good team. Mm. It's a team that can compete. It's a team that can get in the playoffs. But you can't just say, oh, they should win the Super Bowl. No, they shouldn't. Totally agree. Uh, totally agree, Lo. I'm not saying we, Lo and I. Wow. We, wow are you okay? Lorenzo Sonny, you're, you're and I. With me. He you said that. Totally uh, low. Lorenzo <laughs> and I. Lorenzo and I both <laughs> agree. They can win the Super Bowl. But for this team, like expectations, now nah, they got a lot of grinding to do. They got a lot more work to do. And here's what I think of sometimes. Uh, yeah, I hear goo left and right. Uh, Lo, it gets a little old at times. <laughs> he sad. talks about the weaponry, the weaponry of the Niners. <laughs> oh, hell. I'm watching the Bills Vikings yesterday. Incredible. 49ers don't have a Jefferson or Diggs on their roster. Give me a break. Those are playmakers, Lo. 
love it. I, I love it. And, and the thing about it, though, the quarterback, those guys want to go do it for that guy. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's like, and not that they don't want to do it for Jimmy. I think they do. But when you got a guy, when you watch Jefferson and watching those guys, and you watch the ball, the quarterback is, is giving them a chance and giving them, it, it just giving them a, a, a fighting chance. They just, and it's just they're playing at a at a different level. So I do believe the Niners is good, Guru. Like you're saying, and here's the thing, Guru. To to your, I don't want to be all signing, Guru. To your point, this team should be scoring more than they do. This team should they're they're underachieving as far as scoring. You do have some weapons that you should score more. Look, what what what, what happened to Kittle? Where is he? At? I was I was asking Kittle. that low. It, it's it's like this is one of the better tight ends in the league. Now I will say now if you said if you said one, give me a position that you said can compete with anybody in the one position that you told me, and of course it would be your right, your left tackle, and I would say on offense, I would say it would be Kittle. I think even Debo's great as he is, if you said, okay, compare receivers, you uh, the uh, offense to me, I think Kittle is to the most comparison to the, to the best in the league than anybody on offense. What say you guys? Yeah. Wow. Well, he's not even he, a Hawkinson. He knows my answer. Listen to this guy. Not, hey, man. Lo, let me ask you this, because I know the game's won in the trenches. Last night, the, uh, the Niners rushed for 157 yards, 41 carries, 3.8 average. Talk to me about the contrast to the Niners' run blocking and pass blocking and how the pass blocking may be affecting Jimmy G and, and him being the best that he can be. I, I think you're 100% right. Jimmy G is a guy that's cerebral right, He's a smart guy. Jimmy's offensive line has to do better. Because once Jimmy, so Jimmy knows what he wants to do. And, but then his body is, is so his mind saying something, but his body can't do it. Mm. His mind tells him where he's still, where he needs to go with the ball. He knows where he wants to do it, but his body doesn't allow him to do it. Brady, because he's mature, because Brady's mind, and even though his body can get it there. His mind can tell his body he's been, he knows how to throw the ball, get the ball to where it needs to do. Jimmy, can Jimmy, Jimmy knows where he want to do with it, but when he's in a little bit of trouble, okay, he's trying to scramble, but he knows where he wants to throw the ball, but look how it comes out. When a little pressure or boom, someone's at his feet or, and he's trying to deliver, he knows where he wants to go, guys, but his body won't allow him. He does not have that to be able to get because he knows where to do with it. Just like Brady, you watch these guys, watch these elite quarterbacks, watch them play. Their mind and their body can get it there. With Jimmy, unfortunately, when you're watching it, like you said, the body, the ball doesn't come away. Uh, uh, you know, the guy doesn't block. The offensive line doesn't block and hold up for him. Boom, the ball doesn't come out right. It, it affects him. Lo Neal joining us on 95-7, the game. Um, I'm supposed to ask you this one from Dibs. But uh, uh -oh. I guess I guess he saw this a few times again yesterday. And tell me if you did. Teams at the uh, you know the one or two yard line, and they go into shotgun with no running backs. Uh, yeah, I I, I mean, <laughs> did I, I, I just that just irritates me. It really I, doesn't make sense. I don't get it either. It it, it really doesn't. You're, <laughs> you're, you're you're trying to spread out the guys. You're trying to go go say okay, we're going to spread it out. I get it, but then you're creating more one on one blocks. It's, it's hard for the offensive line. I don't know. Unless you got a field, you know, and you're going to spread them out to one side, put three to the one side, and then, okay, run a sweep to the left, or opposite the side, the three receivers, because he's that type of athlete and he's that athletic. But when I see it and I line up, I'm like, look, I'm on the half yard line. Well, you know, line up. And, you know, I saw Minnesota do it. Quarterback sneak didn't get in. I mean, oh. you got to get up there and push that guy in a lot earlier. The offensive fullback, those guys need to run up there and push him in. That was just a great play by Buffalo, but yeah, I, I, I never understood that because now you got to snap the ball. Guys can penetrate and create a new line of scrimmage. You're asking your offensive line to hold them out, and now the ball's coming up back in for a second. Now you got to hand the ball off. That's two seconds, and there's a new line of scrimmage already being created. So I think that is a shotgun to try to run the ball. I, I, I'm not a huge fan, and I understand they want things to develop, and I get the concept. I'm just not a huge fan of it. Lo, let's put a rat on the table. I watch my fair share of college football, and I feel bad for some of the DBs. They'll get uh, flagged for targeting, thrown out the game, suspended the first half of the next game. And I'm like, they didn't mean to do it. It's a violent sport. But let's talk about Dre Greenlaw. 
I mean, his hit on Herbert, who got hit by another player, which allowed his head to be in the vicinity of Dre's. But I was shocked that he got thrown out the game. What's your take on that? Yeah, honestly, guys, with me, I think football's gotten too soft. And I, and I, and I understand you got to protect the guys. I get it. But like you said, uh, Goo, it was with the shoulder, with, oh. with a helmet to helmet. I just think that these officials, and I think that the letter of the law says you have to do it, but I think that, man, it's football. And here's the deal. Herbert was trying to run. Herbert, sometimes these quarterbacks, they're trying to do what they can do because they're trying to take over games, and I understand. So you got to be able to take some of these hits, and I, 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 I'm not for that. I, I get it, Guru. I'm with you. I think that's a bad call. I don't see how Greenlaw got thrown out. I don't think he went helmet to helmet. I think it was a bad call. All right, Lo. Thanks as always. Appreciate it, man. Lo Neal. No worries. Cheers, guys. All right, that's Lorenzo Neal.